Todd Pletcher has three of the six horses in this weekend's Whitney, but does he have the winner? Hey, what's up, everyone? It's El Hombre, Trust the Profits. Welcoming in a first-time guest, we have Chris at Spot Plays HRT on Twitter. What up, Chris? Hey, thanks for having me. I just uh, noticed the quote underneath the smartest guys in the room. I probably don't fit that bill, so I may have to get kicked out. <laughs> hey, we don't either, but we try, and that's that's the important piece here. So, anyway, we're uh, we're into the heart of Saratoga summer here, and we are looking at the Whitney. Uh, six horse field, which doesn't sound too scary, but we have some big hitters. Three, in fact, are what I would call in the top five, at least the top 10 for Breeders' Cup Classic contention here. A lot of four, five, and six year olds in this race. Uh, Chris and I are going to discuss the full field one at a time, but we're also going to discuss Chris is specializing in the, the pace projections here, and uh, we'll both throw out. Probably a couple of predictions on what we think is going to happen. And we're going to keep it brief because we know that's what you like. So let's do it. Chris, why don't we uh, go ahead and let's talk about, first of all, let's talk about what you're going to show here because we have uh, an early pace, a late pace, and an overall pace. So let's let's talk about what you're showing here and how maybe how a little bit about how you develop this, this process in the graphing. So one of the things I do for work, I do a lot of business analytics. And one of the gifts I have is to try and simplify things. And I noticed that a lot of, I don't want to say the old, old school handicappers are a little afraid of technology. And I know there's some other stuff and I'm not knocking anybody else. I just know, you know, there's some other products out there. And me being a data guy, I get confused as all heck. And I wanted to make something that was visual where I could see, because we all know that early pace horses went in the dirt. And we know that when there's a hot pace, you want the late pace. I wanted something where I could do the old school handicapping. And then I could go back and I could validate some of my picks um, when I looked at all this data. Exactly. So I, I agree 100%. I think, I think as we know, horse racing is not necessarily the youngest community of uh, patrons, which is not a bad thing. And there's a lot of people who are intimidated by uh, analytics. So graphically, smart call. I like it. Here is what Chris has come up with as a uh, representation of the Whitney this Saturday at Saratoga. So why don't you take us through what we're looking at here a little bit? So the first chart, your big square you see with the Spot Plays logo on the left-hand side is you'll see a combination of early pace and total pace. And again, I stress to people, it's not just as simple as taking a calculator out and averaging numbers. I'm actually running some algorithms. I'm actually running some different things based on surface, distance, and a million other things that could bore you to death. But basically what this shows me is it shows me in the Whitney, the six, life is good. And I think a lot of people know this on paper, life is good. Looks like he's the best horse by far. Um, he's got the best early kick. He's got the best total pace. Can't fault a lot of things on that horse. That horse is really good. And then just shifting down, um, you see there's some other horses that maybe have some early pace, the three, the one, the two, which makes sense. And that's what the F stands for. F is front runner. V is versatile. That can run just off the pace. And this race is full of them. So we got no pressers. We got no stalkers here. It's pretty much a field of two front runners and the remaining four all can come from off the pace, but they just can't come from that far off the pace. And that's what the thing shows me. So if I just looking at the visual on the left-hand side, I look at the six, I look at the four, I look at the two, and those are the ones that, you know, would excite me here. Then I shift my eyes over to total pace and it just breaks it down. And it shows that the six life is good has the best total overall pace, followed by the four, followed by the two. And then early speed, we already talked about it. Um, and you see the six life is good again. This is an interesting thing for me, though. I love late speed. I love late speed. I probably love it too much on the dirt. But when I look at late speed, the four, Olympiad actually has the best late speed of the field. So that's what excites me. It looks pretty competitive with life is good. And 
you know, if you look at it from a standpoint of just looking at this visual without cracking a PP, I would probably take six life is good and probably pair it with a four and a two. But the way I handicap and I and I look at this and I've looked at this race and I went back and forth again, two front runners. The key horse for me is going to be Hot Rod Charlie. Hot Rod Charlie, we know, needs to be on the front. Hot Rod Charlie has to get out of the gate, and he has to push Life is Good. If that happens, I like my late speed horse here. This is where I like Olympiad. And, you know, the only thing I just get concerned about with Olympiad is Bill Mont and Alvarado. Little on the little on the fence about those two. But, I, you know, there's a bunch of horses in here. I... The one and the three, American Revolution, I love that horse. I remember the first race it had as a maiden, and it had a tough start, and that was probably one of the biggest win bets that I connected on second time out. Um, really like that one. But again, um, Hot Rod Charlie has to push the pace. Zoomer, the three, I like the three, kind of be sneaky underneath horse, but you're not going to get much for a payment here you know, with a, with a six-horse field as long as it stays full. To do a it's try, a bad, it's a bad betting race. Yeah, it's, 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 it is a bad betting. Very race. interesting race in the in the in terms of uh, the horse racing community because, dude, like I think any of these horses that whoever wins this is probably going to be the favorite or or somewhat close to the favorite of the Breeders' Cup Classic. Yeah, this is yeah. you got three of the top dogs. I mean, absolutely three year olds. If you're if you're a three year old guy in the Breeders' Cup Classic, which I'm not usually, this is it. You realize that the six, we all know everybody is going to be pounding this horse. It's going to be the favorite, deservedly Got so. I think you're yeah. going to find value, though, if you decide that you're going to play a pick, whatever, three, four, five, six. And if you go elsewhere besides life is good, that's how you're going to build value here um, at the end of the day. Is any of these other horses are going to be valued just because life is good is going to be bet down so far? So, where do you? Because in my opinion, I agree with you 100%, by the way. I think life is good is the favorite, deservingly. But I think that Olympiad is going to be – I think life is good is probably going to be sub one-to-one, -one, sub even money. Mm -hmm. But I think Olympiad is going to be around one-to-one -one also. Mm. I, I I think a lot of – you know, they got them – what do they have the morning line at? Um, two-to-one. Two-to-one. And I think they're both going to drop because I think they're going to all – those two are going to take all the money. I think Hot Rod Charlie – this is my opinion. Hot Rod Charlie, they have it nine to two. I think that's probably fairly close. And the other three are going to be 50 to one. I mean, and rightfully so. I don't think the other three have a shot. I think it's a three horse race, which your charts agree with. Um, I don't know. So I guess, first of all, is there any chance that American Revolution, Zoomer, or Happy Saber get involved for the win? Because I don't see it, but. I don't see it either. I, I, I mean, I guess I can see just based on the, I can tell you that in this race, it's not going to be life is good. Hot rod, Charlie. I always look for opposite pace styles. So Olympiad Agreed. fits Olympiad fits here. Happy saver. I guess if Olympiad does something foolish and decides to get on the front end, maybe, but I, why would they do that? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So I, these charts make all the sense in the world to me. I, and you're right. If Hot Rod Charlie presses or even gets to the lead, that's a big shakeup. Um, but yeah, we have pretty much the same um, on paper. Pretty much the same scenario. I have. We have. Uh, this is straight up power figures. This is based on their history, and uh, you know, just to let you know, we we did this exclude. We excluded um, Dubai because that's a different animal altogether. So. In order, we do have Hot Rod Charlie. Uh, this is this is a power figure based on a bunch of different formulas, and like you said, we're not going to bore you with the details of that. Not necessarily what I think. I think Olympiad is probably the best bet here. I think Life is Good should win. Olympiad should be... Olympiad's either going to get first or get, like, fourth. That's my opinion on Olympiad. Yeah, I... I just, when I think of value here, and again, it's a two horse, we said it's a two horse race, maybe three if you want to get excited, but right. I've got to, I've got to get at least, I want five to two on Olympia. Two to one doesn't really excite me. I don't think I'm going to get five to two, but I think 
that's where I would look at. This is maybe a race I just watched, to be honest with you. Yeah, honestly, because you're not going to, unless you are just going to play a straight exacta, straight try or something like that. There's no money in boxing here. There's really not even money in key boxing. But man, it is definitely a tough, tough race to make money on. But we are looking at a race that has got big implications for the Breeders' Cup, which is, uh, Obviously, what we're all gearing toward. So, yeah, I agree. There's the other three horses here, cute, especially the six-year-old, the uh, Zoomer, aging like a fine. My notes say aging like a fine wine, but he, he just outclassed here. I mean, he, he he's six years old. He's put up some nice speed figures, but I don't I don't know why the other three are even entered. To be honest, other than hey yo, we're in the the Whitney at Saratoga, which is cool. But yeah, I, I think I think a lot of these horses they go. It's I mean I don't want to say this isn't like a claiming race where everybody just wants to get in the winter circle at Saratoga, but actually Zoomer kind of interests me a little bit. I mean, if you just looked at pedigree, you know, with the curling background and everything, and Rosario's been as hot as any other jockey out there. I've seen crazier things happen. That to me, if you can, if you want to land a bomb, I'm not going to say he's going to win, but potentially could that horse finish second, maybe. Finish third, maybe. I don't think I don't think super factors are even an option in this race, are they? Uh, I wouldn't do it if even if they were. Yeah, but look at look at if you look at our chart, we tend to agree with you. Mm -hmm. This first morning line column here represents uh, what the morning line is versus what we rank rank them. So, in other words, Hot Rod Charlie's, we're ranking him one above what the morning line did. In this case, we do rank Zoomer higher than American. Revolution and Happy Saver uh, versus the morning line. So agreed that if there's going to be a bomb getting involved, like a weird pace scenario, probably, yeah, Zoomer, if you're going to take a shot, that's that's going to be at a price. But I think American Revolution and Happy Saver are both going to be at least above 15 to 1 also. I think it's a three-horse race through yeah, and through. The, the only way that Hot Rod, in my opinion, the only way that Hot Rod Charlie is going to win this race is if life is good scratches. So um, I just don't see that happening. Yeah, I kind of made the joke with a couple buddies on a text group. Uh, hot, the best bet of this race is Hot Rod Charlie for a thousand bucks, hundred bucks, whatever your budget is, to place, because I think he he's likely to get second. He's not going to win. You're right. I I don't see an avenue for him to win, but I do see an avenue for the pace scenario to break down to where he gets second, and at a mm -hmm. decent price. I don't know, but in a six horse field again, like you said. Maybe just sit this one out as far as betting goes. Or look at doing something. Again, I, I think if you are looking for value, I think you just figure it out. You, and I don't know what the race nine and, and race 11 look like after, but you may be able to connect on a nice double here and get some value if you don't have um, life as good as your top play. So that's the other piece of it as well. Yeah, exactly. So this is... Uh, let's see. Anything else to cover? Here? Like Happy Saver we'll just break it let's go one by one just real quick because i'm sure people want to hear our uh, opinion on the three that were insta dropping here so we've already talked life is good hot rod charlie olympiad how about zoomer we talked about maybe the outlier american revolution he was second in the foster stephen foster to olympiad and he wasn't even close but he did beat some respectable horses there um i think you said you go you won some money on him in the past so Obviously, some respect given to American Revolution. But he's been beaten by Olympiad and Hot Charlie in the past. So, I mean, yeah. for what that's worth, too. And then Happy Saver. I think we're living in the mid-2021 dreams here. Um, what did he pull the upset in last year? I can't remember off the top of my head. but um, Good horse. Great horse. This, this He's going against, like we said, th this is the best of the... Best in the world as far as Breeders' Cup go. This is it. He's trying to outclass those three on top here. Just not happening. Any other field, Happy Saver's a monster. but He's got good, you know, Happy Saver's got some nice competitive speed figures, but I I think his better, his better days are behind him. He hasn't won since May of last year, just uh, as a side note. So 15 months ago, he won his last race. Yeah, that's enough for me. He's got placitis. He's got a serious case of placitis, so... Second, second place, one, two, three, four in a row. That's Hot Rod Charlie, too, if you want to look at that. Yeah, 
I, I, exactly right. Exactly right. So, Chris, anything else you want to promote before we cut this thing out? We're going to keep it brief. No, nah, I, I just if you if you like what you saw today, I appreciate you having me on the show. If sure. you come over to Twitter, those of you that are in the Twitterverse, you can find me at uh, HorsePlayerX on Twitter. Um, Spot plays HRT that's on the screen here. If you come over, one of the things I'm going to do for the Saratoga meet is I've been providing data so people can see this. I'm not going to probably do um, Friday's card, but for the weekend, I will have the card up and it's I'm having a good time actually doing this and sharing it with people and getting to teach a little bit. So we're uh, we're doing some good shares and I appreciate feedback. But if you just want to check us out, go ahead and just check us out and give us a try and kind of pair it up with what you're handicapping and doing out there. And like we discussed a little bit ago, Chris is doing it all for free right now as, as he's learning, um, you know, the best way to, to to show it to the newcomers and and veterans. They're a little bit of afraid of the uh, analytics, but it's going good. So, Chris, thanks for coming on for the first time, man. Good. Whitney looks awesome. Small field, but interesting. So thanks for coming on again, man. Uh, are you uh, in the Saratoga area this weekend or what? No, I'm I'm actually headed to Nashville for a for a meeting on Saturday morning, bright and early, and then I'm going to be back out to Saratoga for the Five Star Dave, potentially the Travers. I'm not sure yet, and I will be out there. My favorite weekend of Saratoga is going Labor Day. It's the, by far the best weekend if you ever go to Saratoga. I might I might be out there for the Travers, so maybe we'll see you out there. It'd be awesome. Well, good luck this weekend, brother. Thanks for coming on, man. Peace. Appreciate, appreciate you.